Carta has some fascinating insights into these pre-IPO companies. Henry, what's happening inside these companies right now and what's the mood like? Yeah, sure. It's a, a tale of two stories uh, uh, here. There's a growth stage uh, uh, story where a lot of these growth uh, companies are sort of in a frozen capital markets uh, 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 ring where they can't raise capital right now because they can't justify the prices that they raised previous uh, rounds at. They're not willing to do down rounds because uh, uh, these rounds trigger anti-dilution provisions for early investors and it, it, it penalizes management. And so they're kind of stuck in limbo with these uh, high prices that they they priced you know, six months, a year ago, um, but the public markets won't support and they're trying to figure out what to do. In the early stage uh, uh, markets, uh, they're a lot more active. Prices are resetting quickly. Uh, we're seeing investors continue to be active. There's a lot of dry powder. And so it's, it's a very interesting market. We see this in our business a lot where early stage venture is still active. There's still a lot of deals happening with growth stage venture is at a standstill. Hmm. What are you seeing happening with hiring and layoffs? We had a guest on an investor a few months ago who said he was expecting to see two to three million uh, job cuts across the tech industry. Is that even close to happening? Uh, not even close. Uh, you know, it's really interesting. In, in, in H1 of 2020, when we saw the massive uh, set of, of layoffs happening, we saw uh, headcount growth among our customer base grow about 7%. This year, in the first half of this year, we've seen about 12% growth rate. So it's not as high as you know the, the boom boom years of 2018 and 19, where we were growing at 15 to 20%, uh, depending on the year. Uh, but 12% somewhere in the middle. It's not as bad as 2020. It's not as great as 18 and 19. But we're still seeing a lot of uh, startups grow, really being led by uh, B2B SaaS businesses. So if you look at other sectors like healthcare, biotech, they're suffering a little bit more. But B2B SaaS continues to, to trend strongly. So how do you square that with, we've heard from so many big tech companies, they're you know freezing hiring, slowing hiring down, they're being more deliberate. Uh, do the numbers translate? Yeah, so if you look, what's happening in the public markets that's translating to the private markets is there's, you know, in earlier this year, there was sort of a, a massive capitulation of investors saying, hey, these all these companies are overpriced. Uh, we don't know which companies are gonna survive, which companies are gonna succeed, which companies aren't. And so they punish the entire tech sector. What's happening now is the emergence of investors deciding, well, they're, they're, all companies aren't created equal. Some are more, uh, 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 will, will grow better and, 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 and survive uh, through this period and others won't. And we have to sift through these companies and decide which ones are gonna be the winners and which ones aren't. And what you're seeing is the, the bigger companies and even the smaller companies that are transactional revenue based, where the revenue can be volatile, are, are punished more, more by investors than uh, recurring revenue or contractual revenue businesses. So when you look at like the great, you know, uh, software business like Salesforce and Snowflake, where they have contractual recurring revenue and high net dollar retention and, and high growth rates, uh, they're doing quite well. They're starting to recover, but you see other uh, transactional businesses or business based on, based on media or other types of uh, revenue models, they're being uh, punished more, uh, more severely. And so you're starting to see a sector or a, a rotation between the high quality companies and the lower quality companies. And that's, that's trickling into the, to the venture world where you're starting to see investors just be more selective uh, in the business models that they're willing to support rather than just support anything uh, that seems like a great idea. Meantime, Carta is expanding internationally. I understand you've bought three companies since June. Uh, how are you expanding uh, so quickly in the middle of a downturn? Or is it that you're seeing um, you know, some potentially op opportunistic valuations out there and taking advantage or taking those opportunities as you see them? Yeah, so last year we decided uh, as a board and a company that we were going to get uh, more aggressive uh, internationally. We've always believed that sort of our, the problem we're solving is ownership uh, in companies and ownership is a global uh, uh, phenomenon, a global problem that we can solve uh, across the world. Um, obviously, every region has its own um, uh, nuances and regulatory requirements, and we're not experts outside the United States. Um, and so what we've seen over the last few years, which has been really exciting for me personally as a founder, uh, is all these Carta uh, um, startups in different regions. So we found the Carta of UK, we found the Carta of China, we found the Carta of South Korea, we've uh, uh, found the Carta of India, we've even found the Carta of Africa, we've found Carta in all, all regions. And I, I would say almost every developed country now, we have some version of a Carta, some founder has started uh, a Carta um, uh, for that country. And we've been, we've been talking to all these founders and some of these founders we've invested in their rounds um, uh, uh, to help support them in their region. And then others, 
uh, including the three that you mentioned, like CapDesk uh, in Europe, Valbon in, in London, and then uh, Zen Equity in India. We've actually bought the companies um, after getting to know the founders and falling in love with the team and the product. Uh, and really, their goal is to build out what we've built in the United States and build it out, build out for their uh, region and their local um, market structure, and then start connect these things so that we have a global platform for for equity management. It's an amazing time right now to do M and A uh, as prices. Are, are resetting, uh, capital becomes more scarce, uh, founders are more willing to look at uh, opportunities to join larger companies. Um, we have a super active corp dev team. Obviously, as you mentioned, we've done three deals just uh, in the last two quarters, uh, which we're really excited about. Uh, nothing to announce uh, yet, but we've got more uh, in the pipe as we look uh, look across the world and, and try to find the Cardas for every, every country and continent. All right, pivoting to crypto for a moment, you recently introduced a crypto fund administration whereby anyone can run their own crypto fund on Carta. Explain that and what the end goal is. Sure. So we have a, about 60% uh, of our revenue comes out of the core cap table business, what we're best known for. 30% uh, of our revenue comes from fund administration where we we manage the the, the accounting and the, the investment uh, schedules for, for venture funds. Um, obviously, one of the, the big things, themes that's happened in the last few years is the rise of crypto, particularly crypto investing. Uh, so we've done two, two things on the crypto side. So one is we've, we've built software that allows venture funds that are raising crypto funds, which are different than traditional venture uh, funds because they can now invest in, in tokens. They can take both equity and, and SAFs and other, uh, uh, other token-like um, uh, investments right alongside their equity investments. So it's a, very, it's a slightly different way to manage a venture fund we built software to help support those venture funds. And then on the startup side, uh, there's all these um, uh, startups that are raising effectively um, capital via tokens in, a, in what we call a token cap table. So, so who owns all the tokens of initial startup? And so we also have a token cap table offering, which allows startups to manage both their equity cap table and their token cap table in Carta.